Hello and welcome to another episode of Trade Calls. I'm Annabelle Smith, reporter for The Trade. Today we're joined by Vuk Magdalenic, the Chief Executive of Overbond. We're going to be discussing all things automation and innovation in the fixed income markets. Vuk, welcome to our first episode of Trade Calls. Great to have you. Nice to see you, Annabelle. So today we're going to be discussing all things fixed income automation, which is arguably a huge you know, hot topic in the market at the moment. I think it's one of the markets, one of the asset classes that's definitely undergone the most significant transformation recently. I mean, in your opinion, in what ways would you say that it's sort of embraced automation in the last few years, the fixed income market? Yeah, we're seeing obviously more automation on corporate bond trading desks um, driven by the innovations in AI uh, that can achieve better data aggregation across multiple venues and data sources. And then um, with that application of AI um, cloud as a, a processing uh, power needed to uh, make that application real time, which is obviously necessary for, for trading product. Definitely, I think cloud is one of the things that is just gripped the market in the last year in particular. I mean, what areas would you say have seen the, the most significant transformation? Well, automating uh, no touch or even one touch, uh, let's say corporate trading desk, uh, sell side, buy side uh, workflow necessitates integrating different systems. So that interoperability angle where you have, let's say your traditional order management system and overbought capability as at the level of execution management system where you're actually targeting certain level of automation. But for that to happen, you need to have a very well wired in data sources, API approach and integration with the existing legacy system on the desk becomes a hurdle that really everybody needs to pass. Definitely. I mean, you touched on it there. I mean, what, what would you say is driving this? I mean, I know that certainly in the market now, data has, has never been more pivotal and, you know, everything seems to rely on more and more data sets. And obviously with other conditions like remote working brought in by the pandemic, what would you say that the biggest factors are that are, are driving this automation? If you look at the macro factor, especially in um, euro uh, denominated credit trading um, uh, on a sell side, uh, desks are really struggling to uh, price uh, and respond to, let's say, RFQs in speed within 30 seconds or less, uh, because 80% of the situations that they're encountering are bonds that are fairly liquid, let's say traded three weeks ago. So the pricing that we are observing um, is um, uh, carrying a low confidence and the tools that can bring more pricing insight to a trader and help them respond fast, so increase that um, uh, efficiency on the desk become really, really um, uh, helpful. At the macro level, obviously, we're fighting to do more with less uh, you know, uh, time and resources, and then raise the P&L of the trading business to a satisfactory level. The competition is fairly high, illiquidity uh, in corporate bond trading is also very high, so it's hard to run a business in this climate. And I mean, you, you've, you've touched there on, on sort of where the markets have evolved recently. I mean, where do you see them going in the next year, for example? Do you see any other big moves or other developments that will continue? Well, if we see kind of step-by-step step in fixed income, we started with rates and fairly liquid uh, Q subsistence. Uh, now, uh, I think the innovation or the focus is on automating a larger percentage of the workflow in corporate bond trading. And I think we're moving to higher yielding instruments uh, emerging markets and other kind of sub asset classes within fixed income. Unlike equities and FX, fixed income obviously is not very uniform. So I would say it's actually um, a cluster of many asset classes within. And we still have uh, some way to go to automate uh, the whole uh, fixed income trading universe fully. So we've, we've spoken about the areas that, that have really innovated. Are there any areas that you would say perhaps are, are lacking a bit of innovation and lacking a bit of automation in the fixed income markets? I'd say, yeah, uh, the, the predicament when it comes to automation as well uh, as the objectives in, you know, uh, current execution management uh, um, systems and, and, and approach uh, was to engineer something which is a, a fairly high precision, uh, you know, almost a 100% uh, uh, you know, correct or, or within a certain very tight range when it comes to, let's say, basis points precision in pricing. Uh, when it comes to, let's say, higher yielding instruments, instruments uh, and bonds that don't trade very frequently, um, uh, we've, uh, we've actually focused on engineering an AI algorithm that will do a risk assessment 
tier the uh, market situations uh, to indicate to a trader, even if let's say a bond hasn't traded very frequently, highlighting that it's a tier three liquidity and uh, confidence score so that they know that the risk is heightened and perhaps they should wait and not trade it. I often say automation is not just about automating, it's about knowing when not to. And uh, that kind of risk on risk off approach uh, can turn out really helpful even if we are observing, let's say due to liquidity, that precision on certain securities that trade very rarely cannot get to that full no touch approach. Well, Vuk, thanks very much for joining us. It's been great having you on Trade Calls and everyone at home, we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much.